everyone and um, welcome to this meeting of the planning committee. Um, I think everybody's here, so we'll. Oh no, is uh, Councillor Robinson coming? Do you know Councillor Stamford Bill? Okay, right. Well, we'll uh, we'll see. Other than that, we're all here. Thank you. Uh, right. Can we first of all look at the minutes of the last meeting? Um, before I ask if people are in agreement, can I just um, refer to the, the question that Councillor Josh Williams asked me that evening? And I said I'd let you know when it was going to be sorted. I had hoped we would have had it sorted before now, but apparently there was a delay in the contractor coming to do whatever needs to be done. And they are hoping to be here on Monday. So we will confirm that when that happens. But yeah, thank you. Right, um, are the minutes acceptable to everyone? Yes, everybody agreed with the minutes? Yes, thank you. Declarations of interest. I think we've got a couple of. John Ennis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wish to <coughs> abstain on items eight and nine. I'd like to speak on the items if possible, particularly number eight due to I was the previous lead councillor for housing when these applications were discussed and brought together. So I do have an interest conflict. OK, thank you. Councillor Emberson. I'll be abstaining on the same items as the current lead member for housing. OK, thanks. Well, here I saw Councillor Stafford Beale. Yes, it's um, item number 11. Councillor Chair, I'll be abstaining on number 11, also the Prospect Park, as that is my lead member responsibility. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Did you get all those reasons? Oh, sorry, Councillor Carnell. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'll be uh, abstaining on item 12 on the grounds of predetermination, but I would like to speak as a ward councillor. OK, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Which takes us on to um, questions. We don't have any this evening. Um, and then we've got the report on potential site visits on page 21. So do we introduce this, thank you. Hello, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Yes, yeah, so there's a list of four um, items that will be coming to a pack in the future. And I can advise that for the first one, 18 Parkside Road, Reading, application reference 210582. Um, this is a resubmission of a previous application that was refused by Planning Applications Committee following a visit by members uh, back in March. Um, we're aware that there's new members on the committee who didn't have the advantage of visiting the site and indeed that was during lockdown so I'm not sure if all of members chose to go to that visit but we are recommending that this one is visited um, for the same reasons because of uh, the relevance of seeing the, the site levels within the site and because before you benefited from seeing the site from within the site and also I believe you went to the neighbouring properties it would need to be an accompanied visit so therefore we're recommending that you, you do an accompanied visit and we will confirm the date uh, to proceed the one where the relevant committee when the report would be coming so not for the next time but possibly for the next one after that thank you if we could have as much notice as possible of that yeah. sometimes people yeah. need to yeah so, so so the company dates for your site visits are already in your calendars but we will confirm the time for that <laughs> thank you councillor annis yeah thank you i take that that's for all councillors because there are changes to the application so mm -hmm. it might be worth looking at yeah. anyway yeah, yeah. yeah. So everyone be invited yes yeah, I have to say I went outside of the company and because and, um, I couldn't make the time, but I will try to make the time as much as possible. OK, thank you. And so we're agreed on that one. Councillor Carnell, I can see you indicating. Right. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I'd like uh, the application at 82 Albert Road to be looked at, item number 12 on today's agenda as a site visit. I don't think the report truly represents the impact the extension is going to have given its uh, size and proximity to the boundary. 
I, yes, I, I hear what you're saying. Thank you for letting us know you were likely to be saying that. I think the best way to proceed, though, with this one is that we have public speaking here tonight. I think we would benefit from hearing um, about the application and the objectors and, and the, the applicant um, are able to speak tonight as well. And then we could go on the site visit if you want to propose that later. Um, and, and, and when we've heard what's said, I think that would be the best way to proceed rather than agree it now, because otherwise, um, if we're deferring it, then the people who've made the trouble to come here tonight won't won't be able to speak tonight. And it, it would seem a pity to waste their time. Uh, that's fair enough then, Chairman. We'll come back to that uh, to item 12. Okay. Julie. Uh, thank you, Chair. So, so going back to the list um, in your update pack. So um, on the list, the second one on that, there was for the Ranikep Primary School redevelopment. Again, officers recommend an company site visit for this. Um, it's going to be quite an important element of the regeneration of the park. Um, and obviously members will not be allowed to go on your own to have a look at the school. And so we think it would actually be something we need to arrange with the schools to enable you to visit it. Um, and it would also give uh, members a chance to just see what's happened to Deep Park Estate over the last 10 years whilst it's been redeveloped. Thank you. I think that's a good idea. And obviously, I, as yeah. board, one of the ward councillors, know it very well. But So again, it'd be the same sort of arrangement because we don't know as yet which committee that report would be coming to, but we will make sure that you get your visit done before that committee meeting. Um, and then if I can move on to the um, the next one, which is the land at the rear of Henley Road. Um, again, this is a site where there's a change of levels going on. Um, it, and again, members would need to see that from private property. So that's another one that would have to be an accompanied site visit um, if the application comes to committee. I just uh, do the ward councillors think that's helpful. OK. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you'll again let us know which one. Yeah. And then the final one on the list, I, I don't think we need to go there. No, no, so, yeah, so the final one is the house extension for a property that the council owns. Okay, all right, thank you. So that's, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come back to the item that uh, Councillor Carnell uh, raised later on. Thank you very much for that. Can we go on to the uh, planning appeals on page 25? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the report uh, provides a list of the appeals that we've received and the appeal decisions. And there's two reports for you on the appeal decisions received. So the first one is regarding an enforcement um, appeal for 34 Eldon Terrace. The second one is in respect of a a lawful development certificate for existing use for an outbuilding at the Kiln 16A Romany Lane. Um, so both appeals went in the council's favour um, and the reports are given to you there. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody got any comments or questions? Councillor Williams. Just a quick question, thank you, Chair. We didn't get a report on the um, 135 self-contained studio apartments and I read the decision and I thought it was really interesting and I saw the differences of opinion between officers and the uh, inspector and I wondered if uh, I thought it would be very interesting to hear your analysis on that um, and I wondered why uh, there wasn't one but if there just isn't time or or resource then that's fine. Do you want to respond to that? Thank you. Well I suppose the honest answer is we are still sort of considering our our response to it, I suppose. Yeah, so bear with us. Uh, we, we will report when we, we have a, an opinion to give you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, on page 33. Thank you, Chair. There's nothing to add to this report. Thank you. Anybody got any comments or questions? No, can we note that then, please? Thank you, which takes us on to um, the planning applications to be considered this evening. The first of which is item seven, where we have um, public speaking. And we've already heard that uh, Mr. Sporton and Ms. Williams are here to speak uh, against the application. And I believe there's also a, an applicant who is going to speak after them. Is that right? 
Good. OK, thank you. So um, we'll have an introduction and then we'll move to the public speaking. And it's Matt Byrne that's going to, yeah. Yes, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> uh, this application relates to number 111A, Wallington Street, and seeks full planning permission for part demolition of the existing light industrial building and redevelopment to provide a three storey building with basement of six flats. Uh, there is an update report for this item on page seven of the update pack, uh, but no further comments from me, Chair, beyond that which is set out in the main agenda report and the update. Thank you. Thank you for that. So if we could um, ask the first public speaker to speak, and that's Mr Sporton over the phone. And you have, you're going to have two and a half minutes each, just so people are clear. Mr Sporton. If he can press star six to unmute, hopefully. Hey, I think. Good evening. Hello, can you hear me now? I'm... Yes, we can hear you very well, thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, committee members. I'm Nigel Sporton. I'm the senior partner of GBS Health, a firm of architects, and I'm representing the interests of Royal Berkshire NHS Foundation Trust, and I'm speaking tonight with their full authority. Number 71 and 73 London Road are a pair of Georgian villas which adjoin the application site at 111A Watlington Road. And this pair of villas are used by the Trust for clinical purposes with some amenity space and parking at the rear. With regards to the application before you, the Trust are not opposed to the principle of residential redevelopment of 111A Watlington Road but would resist the notion of residents, their visitors and delivery staff walking across NHS land to gain access. The trust solicitors, Messrs Capsticks, did write to the applicant in April, informing them that there's no legal basis for his proposed access over their land, but they have received no reply. And the trust have made two separate consultation comments to officers informing them of this proper lack, lack of proper access. Uh, on the application drawings, it's clear that access to the majority of the flats is across trust land and the ownership certificate notification was not sent to the trust. The ownership certificate indeed appears to state that the land is or is part of an agricultural holding. Uh, we think this might be incorrect. In light of this fundamental impediment to the scheme being let or eventually being sold, the trust would suggest that the application be deferred until such time as the legal access can be resolved. Thank you for your time in listening to this. Thank you very much. If we could ask you to stay on the line, because I'm going to ask Ms Williams to speak next, and then there may be questions from the committee to either of you on the basis of what you said. Thank you. So Evelyn Williams. Good evening. Good evening and thank you everybody for letting me speak to you this evening. I'm Evelyn Williams, Chair of Reading Conservation Area Advisory Committee, and I'd like to expand on some of our objections to this application. Um, which are summarised on page 45 of your report. So in, in summary, um, we objected to the original application, then amended plans were put in and we um, modified our comments slightly, but we retained our strong objection to the application. Um, firstly, the impacts of the basement excavations on adjacent properties. Um, for this project to be achieved, and it wraps around the back of 111 Watlington Street. Basement excavations are required and we're concerned about the impact on adjacent properties. And in the paperwork that was submitted with the application, we couldn't find any um, indication of how that would be achieved. For the occupiers of the property, it appears that two of the six flats are duplex apartments on the ground floor and basement, and that the only natural light to reach these flats is from a ground floor wind, uh, a ground floor window and light well. 
it would also seem that there are no opening windows or natural ventilation to these two flats apart from the front door. If that actually is the case, and I've looked at these plans and looked at these plans, if that is the case, then I don't think this is actually suitable living conditions for, for anybody. We would prefer to see the building as it stands uh, to remain or to be modified if it were to become residential. And there are successful examples of continued or sympathetic, sympathetic adapted use of similar workshops. For example, Pau Brazil, which is a community cafe on Mount Pleasant and for residential use on Randolph Road. Uh, there are illustrations of both those properties in our full comments. Neither of these examples are actually listed buildings, locally listed buildings, or even in a conservation area, but the owners have decided to make full use of the actual asset that they have, rather than demolishing it, partially demolishing it and rebuilding. The entry down Watlington Street into the Eldon Square conservation area is actually is not great because you've got the uh, service station on one side and on the other side, although the houses are very nice, there's a very large car park. And so it is slightly, slightly challenged. And we feel that there should be something better to welcome people into the conservation area. And actually the little building that's there now does that quite well. Well, you have about um, 10 seconds. Oh, it does it quite well because it's stepped back and it just looks warm, cosy and um, comfortable. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if you would like to stay there as well, we'll do, we're just going to ask if anybody's got questions of the objectors and then we'll we'll, we'll move on to um, the applicant. So Councillor Rowland, you're indicating. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this question would be addressed to uh, Ms. Williams. Um, I guess you kind of got cut off there, but um, I, I did recognize uh, through the paperwork that this is a building of Townscape Merit, which is a designation within a conservation area. As you are the chair of the Conservation Area Advisory Committee, um, could you please expound uh, on why you think this might be a building of Townscape Merit? I think you were kind of going there. Uh, and and is there anything uh, that you might like to add to that? Um, actually, probably not a lot to add, but a building of townscape merit is um, designated as such within a conservation area appraisal because it is believed that it makes a contribution to the streetscape and to the conservation area in general. And in um, conservation areas, Reading Borough Council does not locally list buildings. So the fact that it's not a locally listed building isn't a black mark against it. What Reading has within conservation areas are buildings of townscape merit. And it does make a contribution to, to Watlington Street, which is not an entirely residential street. As, as you know, there's a pub at one end. There was a pub at the other end, almost opposite this property. And there are also a couple of shops and there's a church. So it's a very mixed use area. Um, yes, this is to Mr. Sporton, but also to our um, planning and legal advice. You've asked us, Mr. Sporton, to defer the application to allow access issues to be clarified. But as I understand it, um, though those issues are not um, relevant planning considerations as such um, and that would warrant therefore a refusal or uh, a, even a deferral um, and are essentially civil matters that would be litigated if there were an enduring dispute. Um, so I'm just asking you, Mr. Sporton, as to um, the extent to which you have um, uh, full legal title to the land that you are satisfied with and that there are no easements over uh, appertaining to uh, that and uh, I suppose also to our officers just to clarify 
um, the status of that dispute in terms of determining the application, which, as I say, I understand are not relevant planning considerations. So, Mr. Sporton, there's just a huddle going on between our planners and lawyers, but uh, lawyer, but uh, so I wonder, Mr. Sporton, if you might just respond to the the uh, uh, the extent to which you are 100 or 99.9% .9 certain about the claims you made and uh, then to our officers for just a bit of guidance on that chair. Thank you. Mr. Sporton. Just. Uh, uh, thank you very much for that. Um, yes, the trust solicitors are fully satisfied that there is 100% uh, title to the land and that um, this new application uh, cannot be served by pedestrian access across the land. Um, so we think that it is an impediment to a uh, legal planning consent as access is indeed uh, one of the key determinants uh, of a planning application and it seems odd to be able to give consent to a development which cannot be accessed uh, other than by one of the flats, flats through the uh, Watlington uh, Road access. Thank you. I'll just ask either Julie or Wendy if they could give a view on that. Um, yeah, so, so this often comes up where an application uh, may rely on somebody else's land to implement. Indeed, people can put in a plan application in for land they don't own. Um, it doesn't prevent us from granting planning permission for those works, but they need to seek agreement from the landowners or the relevant landowners before they can carry out those works. So that's where the civil action or the civil agreement needs to then take place. Can I Question. supplement a supplementary to Mr. Sporton? Um, Mr. Sporton, as I read the application, this is not just for pedestrian access. This would be access to the cycling store. So there would be cycling across the site and also to the bin store. So there would be trundling of bins as well. So this is not exactly just a pedestrian access um, that would be dependent on resolution of this uh, dispute. End of. Yes, thank you for that additional. You're correct. Um, uh, those uh, 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 other items would also need to be a accessed across the trust land. Um, and I can say in conversation with the State Department, they're not at all happy with the idea of that. But um, there we go. OK, so you finished, Councillor. Um, Councillor Ennis, you were indicating as yeah, well. Yeah, I do. <clears throat> That's a question for Evelyn. Um, I think you might have answered it, but I still just want to get it clarified. On page 45 of the bundle of papers, 4.5 RBC con Conservation and Urban Design, that there's no objections following submission of amended plans. I don't want to read it out. Is What's your comments on, on that? Um, given that they've got no objections. I think you might have answered it, but if you want to answer it again, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, OK, what I will say is the amended plans are better in terms of how the building looks from Watlington Street. And there is a substantial improvement over the previous plans in that regard. But otherwise, I don't see any improvement at all. And um, although I hate to disagree with RBC Conservation and Urban Design, it is actually for you councillors here to decide whether this planning application is approved or not. And so I guess I'm asking you tonight to perhaps disagree with not just RBC Conservation and Urban Design, but also with your planning officers. <laughs> Thank 
I don't see anybody else indicating. So thank you very much um, to both uh, Nigel Swarton and Evelyn Williams. And if we could ask um, Stephen Clark to come up now and speak for the applicant. And yeah, it doesn't matter really where, where you feel comfortable. If you could just introduce yourself and say on what basis you're here before your five minutes starts. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, my name is Steve Clark. I'm founding director of Napier Clark Architects uh, based in Marlow in Buckinghamshire. Um, is it working? There we go. I just wanted to give clarity on the topic before I start a five minute presentation, um, which probably isn't five minutes anyway. Um, about the, the right of way, we we didn't respond to the, to the legal uh, letter that was sent to us. However, we were very confident that we do have right of access across from Prince's Street to the um, access that we require. And we have it clearly annotated in our deeds um, for the site that we have access. And I can read it to you if you like, um, if that would help, or I, I could share that with you um, after, after this. Well, I suggest you, you send that round to us because it's, as has been said, uh, the main issue for us tonight is the actual planning application. Sorry. Just pass it. Land, which, is associated with that, which I didn't bring, but it, it identifies the parcel of land to the rear of 111A Watlington. Okay, thank you. Should I carry on? Can you hear me? There we go. Um, I just wanted to um, start the presentation really with giving you some kind of confidence as to the ability of us as Napier Clark Architects, because quite, we haven't been in this committee room before. In fact, in my 22 years of practicing, I've only been in a committee room twice, um, and this is this is the second occasion. Um, in in um, 2020, which was last year, we were nominated by the REBA and the REBA Journal as uh, one of four emerging practices in 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 uh, the UK, nominated from hundreds, stroke thousands of other pra emerging practices in the UK. Um, I'm also a member of the Reading Design Review Panel, and I've been an active member of that for about three years now. Um, I just want, if you could just put it onto the next page. Oh, the second, that is the second page actually. Um, a couple of projects or a few projects that I've been involved in prior to working for Napier Clark. Uh, the first is a, a grade one listed chapel, um, which is in Great Yarmouth, which we converted into a performance building and into a cafe and so on. It was um, it was given a, a Reba, award, Reba National Award nomination back in 2015. Um, the next slide, please. Um, this is, I worked with the Earl of Leicester on Holcomb Estate um, and converted um, some of their grade two listed buildings into cafe, museum and uh, retail. Uh, fairly lengthy process through planning, but very successful and again won a REBA Region Award in 2016, I think it was. And then more recently this year, a much smaller scale project, which is a project that we did for Napier Clark Architects, has just been awarded a, a REBA Region Award for the South. Um, it was the conversion of a 1970s house into a contemporary new building revitalizing the life of a uh, what could have been a redundant building and instead of knocking it down we uh, convinced the client that it was important to retain the building and that we should um, do part retention similar to what we're doing on this scheme um, and, and create a building that was obviously then further awarded. If we move on to the next slide please. Now, I, I, I think um, the, the, the report that's been put together by the CAAC is we, 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 we're just slightly concerned that it slightly um, deviates from what, what the intention is for the site. Um, it is a part retention scheme. It's not a demolition and a refurbishment. It's a part retention. And we, we um, tried to retain as much as we could and we were retaining the low level of wall and the central element um, of the wall as well on the side flank. Um, we're replacing, effectively replacing the timber box at the front with a new timber um, red brick, uh, highly articulated red brick piece. And then on the rear, we're removing the, the red brick piece and actually setting the building further away from the, the rear neighbours than currently stands. The building is in poor condition. It's been in poor condition for quite a long time. And we do feel it's sort of an opportunity to, 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 to give it a new sort of lease of life, really. Um, but a new lease of life doesn't always mean that you have to keep the total expanse of the existing. And as per the example I showed you previously that won a REBA award, we did part retention and, and, and moved it into the next uh, next level, really. Um, next slide, please. 
Um, the repurposing of the site is, is overdue and the existing building, as I've already said, is in poor condition. Next slide. Um, I, I think that um, uh, we are hopefully capable architects and uh, we're very much design focused architects. And we would like to think that the, as um, Evelyn has said, um, the design of the building is, is, is good. You know, it, it's, it's a well articulated piece of architecture, but we feel slightly the opposite to Evelyn in the fact that we feel that the existing building with its current timber box at the front actually doesn't have enough presence. It needs more presence and the, the end of the terraces needs to be articulated with almost a, a um, end condition, which is um, has more presence than it currently does. Next slide, please. Um, you can see that the existing building is located very close to the rear neighbour and if we were to retain that and repurpose that into uh, uh, residential, we feel that the actual location of it is very close to the to the rear property. Ho however, so on our, our new scheme. Five You're minutes. aware you've only got 30 seconds left. OK, right, we can flick through this quickly. Next slide. We've stepped the building back away from the neighbours so that there is more um, uh, space um, and less focus towards the, the rear building. We've also, um, uh, subsequently to this, we've um, removed two of the windows off the back and we've located them on the side. And we've also put perforations to the back to, to give oblique views. Um, next slide, please. It's a very simple plan. I think it's fairly self-explanatory, but we've moved the- your, your five minutes up now, so- okay. Maybe if there's questions, you can add a, a little bit to that, but I have to stick to the, okay. the time to be fair to both um, sides, if you like. So thank you for that. Are there any questions? Councillor Josh Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much for coming in and speaking to us. Um, uh, one of the objections raised by the um, Conservation Area Advisory Committee was that future occupiers uh, might live in a basement with little or no natural light or ventilation. Could you talk about that a bit, please? Yeah, I, I, I just, well, I disagree really. Um, the, the, the traditional terrace house is, you know, um, enclosed either side and has front and back windows. Um, and what we propose here is in the same vein, really. So the um, at ground floor, the, the two apartments or the two, two bedroom apartments sit at ground floor and lower ground. And they and at, at the ground level, the living spaces have views. So the front one has a view. If we go to the plan, actually, if you go on the plan, the front one has views and natural ventilation out to the road. And on the rear, the uh, living space area has views and natural ventilation out to the rear. I, I couldn't quite understand the, the objection to natural ventilation. We do show window openings on the facade um, next to the fixed pane of glass. It's not shown on the plan necessarily, but it is shown on the on the facade. Then at lower ground, um, you have the bedrooms where there is a light well with light coming down into the light wells and into the bedroom spaces at lower ground level with natural ventilation as well. Could I could I follow up a little bit more? Is that okay, Chair? Sorry. Yeah. So the 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 basement level, which I think you're referring to as lower ground, mm. is underground and its natural ventilation and light are effectively through a, a single light well at either end? Yes. And how is that natural ventilation? If you open up that light well, that's the natural ventilation. Yeah, you're opening up to a light well, which is ventilated from above. Yes. From above. Yeah. OK, I yeah. think I understand the plan. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Rowland, you next, I think. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for coming in and seeing us this evening. Um, could you clarify for me what, what you were saying? You're, your to me as i'm seeing it you're basically uh demolishing the majority of the building because we're on an a-frame if, if i'm correct kind of there and we're changing the shape there um but you do have you're you're calling this a part retention yes. is that what you're calling it and yes. if so could you i guess uh clarify for me uh what beyond the back southern wall um is the part retention, if there is any, uh, beyond that. And also, what do you consider the, um, do you consider that back wall actually to be salvageable or are, are the, or is the condition of the bricks back there 
to such an extent that they're probably friable and not really what what kind of brick retention are you uh, expecting off that area there? So it, it is a part retention scheme. Um, I think the elements that are being removed, for instance, the, the timber um, gable end at the front will need to be removed anyway, irrespective of whether it is seen to be a refurbishment of the existing. The actual timber box would need to be removed. It's not in a fit state to keep. So the whole um, structure and cladding and roof of that front element would be removed. The, the roof itself is not in great condition, and so that would need to be taken away anyway. And likewise, the, 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 the brick, brick building at the back, which has the sort of mono pitch roof, that is arguably in better condition than the others and arguably could could remain. Um, but we are removing that in order to facilitate a better relationship between the back of the proposed and the, the back of the neighbouring properties at the back. In terms of the elements that we're retaining, we're retaining the low level wall, which is actually owned by the NHS um, and is not arguably not been maintained particularly well. Um, and then we're uh, retaining the central piece of wall that sits above that. So between the timber and the mono pitch building at the rear. Um, how, in terms of how we will retain those, there's there's a possible chance that, um, you know, the quality will will be such that we, 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 we may have to take elements of it down. However, if we take it down, the, the intention is that, or elements of it down, that we will be replacing the bricks in their same position as taken down and just repointed. Yeah, but you you'd have to do that, irrespective which irrespective of which scheme we do, or which scheme you choose. You know, so I I think that the idea that we can just refurbish what's there is is not quite correct. There's quite a considerable amount of work that needs to occur to that for it to be a refurbishment scheme. And, and we would consider the changes that need to be made in, um, in, in I, I guess, quite quite similar to what we're proposing in terms of, um, although we're replacing with new elements. Does that make sense? I, I would like to say about the basement as well. Um, the comment made about the basement was that um, the disturbance to existing buildings, uh, we're working um, with the Air Estate in London and um, we're working under grade one listed buildings and putting basements in. Um, it's not a new or um, unheard of process. And admittedly, it's not an easy process and method statements and various other statements are required in order for that process to happen. But it's a perfectly feasible solution in a, under a graded or non-graded or conservation area. No, no. Councillor Page, I think you were indicating next. Yeah, Josh, Will, Councillor Josh Williams has asked one of the questions I was going to ask, but can I put it this way that you are saying to us that because historical buildings in that area may have poor quality basement accommodation, it is right to design a brand new building um, incorporating similar accommodation it doesn't have a currently have a basement sorry it, did you I, I sorry i didn't understand the question did you're saying that there are similar basements in the area right and in providing these basements in the way that you are they are mm. replicating and based on very similar basements that exist in that in the area which of course were designed and provided many decades uh, ago and um, are therefore of a much poorer quality. And what I'm saying to you is that as an architect, you seem to be saying to us, it's acceptable to replicate poor standard basement accommodation in a new building. I don't see it as poor accommodation standard basement. I see it as a, a lower ground or basement, if you choose to call it that with a light, a light well at either end that allows natural ventilation and light into those spaces. I'd, I think I think you're correct. Basement design has moved on substantially um, and, and therefore um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. It's, I don't see it's an issue. If you if you do perceive it as an issue in terms of lighting and, and, and ventilation, potentially, um, I guess that's a difference of opinion, maybe. OK, yeah, no, that, that's helpful. Um, and the, I'll just come back to the thing you've kind of the uh, the extract of the deeds you've circulated, which is very helpful. 
because frankly, um, I think if I were a lawyer, I would uh, go with the NHS Trust on this because the wording of this refers only to access from Princess Street mm. and not Watlington but Street. We're, we're not asking for access from Watlington Street. Sorry? We're not asking for access from Watlington Street. The plans show access from Watlington Street, unless I'm misreading. We, we, we have a we have a we have an established right of way that's been used across the car park, but the right. the D's refer to Princess Street. Yeah, yes, but okay, but I'm grateful to you for circulating this because clearly it it, it is going to be the subject of some um, dispute, um, particularly as all the reference in this is to access from Princess Street. Um, the other point that I would make is that there's reference to a perpetuity period of being 80 years from the date of the transfer, which presumably has long passed. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's not for us to adjudicate on legal matters. I mean, that's Agreed, been established, yeah. but yeah. It, it's clearly sufficient to indicate uh, to me that, that, that there's likely to be a, a dispute. So uh, um, yeah. my, my final question to you, sorry, I mean, uh, that, that that's, uh, um, is really about the um, issue of the uh, design from uh, and the appearance um, from what is the most visible end, namely London Road, Princess Street, Watlington Street. I mean, you see very little. As a passerby, you'll be going along the London Road accessing Princess Street and therefore mm. Um, I'm sure you would accept that the design of the building and the appearance of that is probably the most important element um, of the scheme. And Agreed, yeah. uh, uh, whilst I would agree with Evelyn that the scheme before us is an improvement on the earlier scheme, I would say to you, based on what you've done before, is that really as good as it can get? I, again, that's a subjective opinion, isn't it? So I think I, I can't really answer that. I would suggest that what we've proposed is is a good scheme um, and a good design. Um, but you sorry, well, you changed substantially. You would have said that about the first application unless they'd been pushed back. Um, and the fact is that we, we, we have, we, as we, a long serving member of this committee, I've yeah. seen three or four applications come forward and then we've said that's much better. Um, and I suppose it's really a question to you. Is this really the end of the road as far as this site is concerned? We've been working with the planning authority for quite a long period of time on this application um, and, and working with the conservation officer, which is what we do. That's what I've done on previous projects with the Earl of Leicester on Holcomb Hall. That's what I did on St John's Chapel. That's what I've done on other conservation projects. We work with the planning authority and the conservation officers to get it to a point where all parties are happy, which is the point that we have reached. Um, and therefore, this is our proposal. And and, and yes, we, we've got it to the point where we think it is an appropriate proposal for this site. Councillor Stanford Beale, you were next, I think. Thank you. Um, thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting. Thank you. Um, very interesting if you worked on other grade two listed buildings they look really interesting the photographs you showed us um but i just think this design is is not um yeah so in question <laughs> question is why did you decide to put such a modern design in this area where you know that we have a very active cac as we call it not the caac um why did you feel this was appropriate considering the context of the area where we've got the Royal Barts Hospital, we've got the Royal Barts Diabetes Unit and the two Georgian villas adjacent to the site? Um, and we've had other developments in that area where, for instance, we've got to the north of the hospital, we've got a nice Georgian terrace that's gone in as a modern building. With So it's in context and in keeping with the other buildings in the area. Mm. I just find this there, it's, it's an, it was an interesting choice. So there is a place for there's a place for contemporary architecture in any location that you choose to put it. Um, you, just because you're working in a conservation area or just because you're working next to a grade one listed property does not mean that you have to put a pastiche piece of architecture up. It can be contemporary and, and that is not dictated by location or context. It's how you deal with it and how you mm. how you how you um, you know, design it around the context that that is the 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 the, the um the process really. 
So I, I wouldn't be afraid to think that just because you're in a conservation area, you have to design um, traditional architecture because that's not the case. And if that was the case, then then that would be problematic for the evolution of architecture. OK, and secondly, we have the interesting um, discussion about the lower ground floor, the basement. Um, with um, we are, you know, in a sensitive area, we've got terraced housing there for residents, and then we've also got the, the medical facilities that are nearby. One of the key things about um, basement excavations is, is they are noisy and very, they can be very, um, have a big impact on neighbours. Would you be a good, a good neighbour in your construction methods? Oh, of course, I mean, I, that, that, that's very much dictated by planning as well, isn't it? There, there, are, there are many, many processes and method statements that we would have to submit uh, to work in line with the, the recommendations of the authority um, and make sure that we adhere to those um, requirements. Um, and that's relatively standard procedure for us to do. So, yes. Thank you. Councillor Rowland, I think you had one more question and I'm not seeing anybody else indicating so. I did and I apologize for coming back chair, but um, I just wanted to ask you uh, in regards to your understanding about uh, the way we work in this town with conservation areas and buildings of townscape merit <coughs> that we don't locally list within conservation areas because this is really our designation. Um, the building of townscape merit was placed on this building uh, at the time that the conservation area appraisal was made and there is no um, real explanation of perhaps why it was a building of townscape merit although I that's why I asked uh, Ms. Williams about that earlier what her <clears throat> excuse me what her thought was about the building of townscape merit designation and what that actually added to the conservation area <clears throat> excuse me and what she what she explained does go back to the reasons for building of townscape merit is that it makes a contribution of care of character to the street in other words that if that building were removed a certain part of the character of the conservation would be of the conservation area would be lost so my question to you is a did you understand that the building of townscape merit um uh, designation, what it what it means in this town. Why did your heritage statement that you provided uh, dismiss the building of townscape merit uh, rather handily as not really being justified? And in the end, your answer here uh, is, do you think this is replacing a building of townscape merit? Do you think this is providing character that that quirky little building and we may know how poorly it's shaped, what condition it's in and everything else, that that quirky building for whatever reason was listed as a building of Townscape Merit years ago. Thank you. If I could just put it in, in a different direction, that um, new buildings can also bring merit to a site. And therefore, if um, a building which is arguably of merit, that's again, I, I, I feel that's, um, a subjective view, although I understand um, it is within the conservation um, area. Um, I didn't write the heritage report, but I do I do agree with it in terms of the quality of the building um, is questionable in terms of elements of it. Um, just because something has been built and it remains there for a hundred years doesn't mean it and it and it forms uh, part of the area. It doesn't mean it is to be kept. The petrol station over the road. That's a prime example. sits with sits in the same area. Um, however, um, it, you know, it's. It, it, I think the planning officer would agree. It's sort of a, a blight on the road. What we're proposing here is is to improve the quality of that building um, through the design that we've proposed. Um, I've just got one more question now, Councillor. Mickey uh, Lang, thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for your presentation. It's just to clarify a point that was raised by um, Councillor Rowland in the park retention of the southern flank. I'm sure you would have done a survey, you know, about the demolition process. And are you going to shore the wall up or are you going to knock it down and reuse the materials? I, I think it's, uh, it is subject to the survey. Um, we um, of the opinion based upon the survey received that the, 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 it is in poor condition. Yeah. A lot, most of the buildings in poor condition. Um, 
and we would but we 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 our intention is that we will try and retain it if we can and if we can't retain it um, then it will be taken down brick by brick and put back up brick by brick that's the way we'd normally do it I actually think it's uh, quite a modern and attractive building by the way thank you very much thank you Katie, so thank you very much for your time uh, and we'll now move on to a uh, committee discussion about this application. Thank you very much. Anybody? Council Councillor Rowland. Uh, sure, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, myself, along with Councillor Page, are both, both ward colleagues. Uh, in this and have watched this uh, for quite some time as it's um, gone from uh, initial application and then um, re, uh, reappeared in a new iteration. Uh, the new iteration um, does take care to note the um, terrace line with the roof line uh, and also notes the uh, footprint uh, that the building is on which is somewhat uh, recessed. So those are those are appreciated. Um, by the same token, um, this is, as I was alluding to in my questions earlier, a building of townscape merit within a conservation area. And that uh, does mean something um, um, in so far as a as far as uh, a material consideration for us. Um, not that what because we're not locally listing within conservation areas. Um, the um, the terrace itself, uh, this being the end bit, uh, has a, con a obviously a long continuation, and the building currently there uh, is an abrupt kind of end to it. But whatever reason that building that is currently there was designated as a uh, building of townscape merit still exists. There is a certain oddity to it. There is a certain quirkiness to it. Uh, and it makes, as as um, Evelyn Williams was trying to put her finger on, a, a kind of homey kind of contribution. We may say it's in poor condition. We may say any number of things about it, but it it is definitely identifiable and a kind of landmark on that um, on that street. It also, as a building of Townscape Merit, identifies it as something that has been a business for a long time, um, which which is unusual on the end of a residential terrace. I am not opposed, uh, essentially, to, to this becoming residential, but what I do think uh, is proposed here is um, is almost an overuse of the uh, plot there. And I think it fails on meeting some design standards that we set forward as far as in with um, in EN3 and EN4 in the terms of design quality that we would expect in a conservation area. I firmly agree with the architect and I do agree modern architecture can be a can be something within a conservation area. And I'm saying something modern as in different. Uh, absolutely. I'm not I'm not convinced that this is the answer. Uh, this is uh, the the discordant fenestration running all the way along the terrace, ending with this, is is not really something that is preserving and enhancing the conservation area as far as I'm concerned, which is the duty of EN3 uh, to preserve and where possible to enhance. I do not believe that this is enhancing the conservation area from either the western view or the southern view of the property. It's bringing in a several new elements here. And again, nothing wrong with that. But there are no balconies to allude to elsewhere within the area immediately. There's also the the oddness of the straight roof line, which is introducing some kind of metal uh, vertical verticality kind of material that is entirely not in keeping with materials that we have elsewhere within the conservation area there and is only really excuse me, something we just see on modern design quite frequently. There's no real reason for it, and I'm not moved to sit down there and say, wow, that looks great. Maybe it's a faux mansard roof. 
again, there aren't mansard roofs that we can allude to within the area that would cause us to feel that this is the appropriate design answer uh, to this. So I would, I am um, not really uh, keen on um, recommending this for approval based on the fact that I do not believe it adequately answers EM3, EM4, or CC7, uh, as a matter of fact. And um, again, I think it's an overuse. Uh, I imagine others may have comments about the basements. I'm very concerned about the basements. When we want to be approving modern design, again, great, but we're not, I do not feel like approving a basement where there is nothing but uh, light coming from a light well, which you might get some sun on the western side, but you're never going to get any sun. And there's two flats there. You're never going to get any sun really coming from that side, if only maybe very early in the morning. I just do not see that there's sufficient natural lighting to support that. We want good quality residential, and I do not believe that um, that basement uh, flat kind of extension with that that light well is going to provide that. So I am not moved uh, for those reasons that I mentioned um, to to give this my approval this evening. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Devine, I believe you were next. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to echo quite a lot of what Councillor Rowland has actually just said. Um, in my own words, I think the current building um, is a bit peculiar uh, and I don't understand why we would actually want to retain something that uh, doesn't actually um, improve the street scene at all. However, the, the, the proposals before us for a, a new building, which is a new building, I don't retain my view of all of the old one, but it's essentially a new building. I don't think fits in with the, with the current street uh, views at all. It seems to be one big square box um, on the corner of uh, Watlington Street. I'm not in favour. Uh, I don't think it adds anything to the townscape, um, my own personal opinion. Um, and I think also the issue of basement lighting um, is a real worry um, for people living in the flats on the basement level. Um, to have to rely on the natural light, I suspect they're going to have their lights on 24 hours a day um, because they're, they're not going to find enough light to live by. Um, so on, on those grounds, I think I, I'm not in favour of uh, accepting the, this current proposal. Thank you, Councillor Challenger. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. And thank you so much for all the contributions from uh, the supporters and the objectors so far. Uh, I'm in favour of this application. I think it shows something interesting. It shows something different in a positive way. It shows a thorough and thought out presentation on a building that has been abandoned for several years, uh, you know, and has fallen into a disrepair. Um, sorry, Councillor Page, I won't quote how many years it has been. Um, I think also this issue around basements is an honest front from the architecture about the challenges and the experience that they have with dealing with that and actually shows some thought and care that we don't often see when we're talking of HMO conversions of basements. And at least it's been discussed and debated. And Again, it's down to a personal preference. No one is going to be forced to live in a basement flat if they don't want to. You know, if people don't want a lot of light, they can choose to live there and have their lights on if they want to or don't want to. Uh, I believe we're going to, I may have a question from the floor uh, there in a second. Uh, I think also it's really great to see a housing development with no plans for cars. You know, how rare is that from this committee to see a development that is going to be foot and cycle only? So I think that's a really great set forward. And yeah, I do think that it is different and I think we can develop a different and interesting building. And yeah, I think it's got my full support on this. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stamford Beale, you were indicating next. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to echo a lot of what Councillor Rowan's already said. I feel that um, it's overdevelopment of the site. Um, I don't like the mansarding at all. I don't feel it fits in with what's in the area. And 
you know, I used to live, in, I used to work in the city of London. I love modern design, but if you're going to put something modern in, make it really good. And I just don't feel that this design is really good. Um, you know, it's in, you know, conservation area. This was a lovely, quirky building. I used to walk past it every week when I used to teach English to the Gurkha ladies down at Watlington House. And I used to love walking past it. You know, if they'd had a design that could have incorporated that shape and, you know, dark clad, dark clad wood into it, there'd been a nod to the past. I'd have been much more excited and interested than this. I think the internal layout of the flats also concerns me and you know although you know we've got a housing shortage I don't think we should be putting in you know approving basement flats that don't have good light and good ventilation you know if anything the last 18 months have shown us is you know we, we may be going back into lockdowns we don't know and we need to be having you know good quality design for internal living as not as well as the outside aesthetics um so again I'd say it doesn't comply with policies um policies outlined previously thank you i i think we should uh, refuse planning okay thank you um councillor emberson you were next i think i think it was councillor page but i'm happy to speak now so you both about the same time then i no, you can't I, I mean, chat, I'm struggling with this one. I, I think it's really difficult and I appreciate both sides of the arguments we've heard so far. Um, and it, you know, with planning, it's really difficult to abstain, but I think I feel inclined to on this application because I appreciate both Councillor Challenger's comments in terms of approving the application, but also those comments made in terms of refusal. Personally, I feel externally there's nothing wrong with the design and I quite like the design externally. I think um, it is suited and whilst I appreciate the conservation comments, clearly our conservation officers felt that it was suited to the area and I think what currently stands does um, detriment the area. I don't think it looks aesthetically pleasing whatsoever and I think this would be an enhancement. But I do have concerns in terms of the basement internally and for that reason it's difficult to fully support the application and I think Councillor Page asked the applicant in terms of could something better be brought forward and I feel perhaps something better could be brought forward but it's it's a really tricky one I feel and for those reasons I will be abstaining. Councillor Page. Um, yes Chair, um, can I just remind colleagues of the view that the vast majority of people will be seeing and paragraph 6.18 on page 52 emphasizes this that views of the building are primarily obtained from the south and the adjacent car park the junction of Watlington Street and London Road and views from the rear across the car park from Princess Street and that is the 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 main view um, of this building um, and basically it's a boring flank wall that we're being offered with very little design um, and uh, you may have views about the present building but I think given that this is such a prominent site and a conservation area we are entitled to expect better and uh, you know the fact that the first design was bad and this is less bad doesn't mean and that's basically what the conservation officer uh, was saying it's for us to decide whether the design of that building is adequate and appropriate uh, for this very very prominent site normally a flank wall would only be viewed by a handful of people but this is the main view and is that really adequate no it isn't um, i would also reference for further reasons for refusal um, the uh, peremptory dismissal of retained light industrial use. Now, I used to live in Watlington Street some decades ago, but I, when it was a flourishing light industrial unit, there were no complaints and none whatsoever. You have a flourishing shop, Frock and Rock, or whatever it's called, Frock and Roll rather, uh, next door. Um, you have an ugly petrol station, yes, and hopefully when we all go electric, um, it might be converted to something um, else. 
Um, but the, the, this end of Watlington Street has a much more commercial um, feel about it. After all, all, Melrose House, and we've heard from the NHS Trust, is not residential, it's an office block. Um, and uh, so this end of Watlington Street lends itself um, to the retention of light industrial use. Every applicant says, oh, we've tried to, to let it. Well, of course, if you let it at a high price, you won't get the, the right takers. So I would say uh, that that really uh, requires further examination. We have been very insistent in our local plan and we still are, that the retention of employment relating to light industrial is very important. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not just going to nod through every loss of light industrial without a good case being made. And I'm afraid saying, oh, we've been trying to let it for the last three years, half of which has been a pandemic, um, uh, hasn't been successful. So. Um, that is something that uh, I would uh, um, object to. Officers might not object to the proposed loss of employment land in this location. I, as somebody who was very much involved uh, with the local plan um, and with the very strong statements in support of retention of light industrial uses, supported by the inspector, uh, would choose to uh, differ with that um, assessment. And then we come to the basement, and I'm glad Councillor Williams picked up on this, Councillor Stanford Beale, Councillor Emerson, and a number of others. Um, it is not acceptable for new buildings to replicate substandard basements. It's as basic as that. You know, to say that what the, I know Watlington Street has got some poor basement accommodation. Councillor Rowland lives in a street where there's some really grotty um, basement accommodation, not in her house, but next door and nearby. Um, and we as a housing authority and a planning authority should not be in any way condoning um, what is basically substandard accommodation. Um, the stampede for new accommodation for you to councillor uh, challenger should not be based upon substandard accommodation such as the government is encouraging, for example, through prior approval conversions. And I think we have to draw the line uh, somewhere. Um, and uh, that is a further reason for uh, refusal. Uh, I think enough has been said by others, uh, Chair. So, oh, just on the access point, um, it, this is an interesting one, um, whether it gets to the point of a, a legal dispute. The fact is pedestrian access to this building will be as much from Watlington Street as it will be from Princess Street. The legal application might say um, will come from Princess Street, but there's a car park there. People will walk through there and there's nothing the applicant can do to stop it unless, of course, the NHS decides to erect some form of barrier checks and, uh, um, uh, and other uh, supervision to the, uh, to the car park. Anyway, that's not a reason for refusal. Um, and uh, I would second, I don't know whether the council was proposing refusal, but if she didn't, I would propose it or second it uh, to make business chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the only other person I've seen indicating is Councillor Josh Williams. Thank you, Chair. It's, it's difficult following Councillor Page often, but um, I'm going to support pretty much everything him and Councillor Rowland have said. I, I wanted to just add my voice and I, I was concerned that we might think that our residents have the choice to live in a basement or, or in somewhere with good natural light and ventilation. A lot of our residents don't have choice. They go where they can afford. Um, and I've no idea whether these would be affordable or not, these basement places, but I don't think that that should be an option that is the future of Reading at all. I think other councillors have, have all said that, uh, and I'm happy to support them in that. Um, so uh, I, I will join in voting against this. The basements are wrong. I think key to me is item 6.12 in our report, where the officer notes that in order to replace a building of townscape merit in a conservation area, the key elements that its replacement must be of an appropriate scale, form and high quality design. It, as Councillor Page and Ronald have said, it's not, it doesn't meet any of those three criteria. It's not the right form. I don't want to live in a basement. It's not the right design. It's just a big flat wall and it's not the right scale for that plot. So I think it fails on the three key um, challenges that the officers put before it. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you. I don't see anybody else. Is there anything officers needed to come back on? I've been checking with my colleagues, um, Matt and Richard, if they want to come back. They have been discussing, obviously, the comments they've been receiving. Richard or Matt, do you want to come in here? Thanks. Yes, I've just a few points from me. Um, just uh, with regard to, um, there was concern about construction of the basement. Uh, I think we could deal with that with a, an add-on to the construction method statement condition um, to include some detail of the construction for that. Um, a few points about the, the basement quality accommodation. Um, what I would say is um, you know, within the local plan where basements are proposed, it does say that there should be duplexes. Um, and I think that the light wells here are quite generous and of a good size. Um, I think a few comments also about the visibility of that flank wall from the side. Um, I think that the difficulty and challenge is it's obviously a shared boundary. So kind of adding any kind of additional windows to kind of break that up is is a challenge. Um, um, perhaps why that, that wall is um, you know, uh, limited in terms of the, the fenestration that's there. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, I was sort of clearly got a division of opinion here, so I'm going to uh, first of all ask whether or not people support the officer recommendation. Is it if? Uh, yes, Councillor Page or Councillor Rowland, which of you wishes to be the? Yeah, Councillor Rowland proposing. So are you happy for me just to take a, a, a vote on the um, proposal to refuse this application? We don't have to go through that other process that you were taking us through when we were virtual. No, I'm just clarifying because we had a bit of a to and a froing on that earlier on in the... Yeah, no, I agree. I'm just checking because last time we were asked to vote on uh, in a different way, but so... Can I put two, and I will do a, a roll call on this, um, all um, the proposal from Councillor Rowland and Councillor Page is to turn down this application, refuse it. So can I see, um, by we reading up names, um, Councillor Challenger? I am voting against Councillor Rowland's motion for, for the officer recommendation. Councillor Carnell? Thank you, Chairman. I'm voting for Councillor uh, Rowland's uh, proposal. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Devine. Uh, for the proposal to refuse. Yeah. Councillor Emberson. I'm abstaining on this application. Councillor Ennis. For the proposal to refuse. Um, Councillor Lang. For the proposal to refuse. Councillor McEwen. For the proposal to refuse. Thank you. Councillor Page. For the proposal to refuse. Councillor Robinson's not here. Councillor Rowland, we know where you are, but yes. For the proposal to refuse. Councillor Stamford Beale. For the proposal to refuse. And uh, Councillor Josh Williams. Uh, for the proposal to refuse, Chair. And Councillor Rose Williams. Uh, for the proposal to refuse. And I'm also voting for the proposal to refuse. So um, that proposal is carried. Thank you all very much. Um, Chair, can I just be clear on the reasons for refusal, please? Um, it, I think this is possibly something the committee needs to um, discuss because we need to issue a, a refusal notice and we need to know what to write for reasons for refusal. Councillor, summarise that again. Um, well, yes, I could start off. That was uh, EN3, EN4, and CC7 having to do, uh, having EN3 and EN4 having to do with the conservation area, CC7 about the design and the public realm, I believe. And uh, I believe that Councillor Page would probably say EM3 regarding employment, um, but those are the ones that I've written down here. Um, can I can I suggest, Chair, that we 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 have a clear design reason, um, and uh, I agree that uh, policies um, CC7, EN3, EN4 are all are all relevant. Um, in terms of wording to encapsulate that, um, we've got I think uh, comments about um, discordant design through the massing, particularly the flank 
um, I heard the committee didn't like. Um, so that's probably the key reason for refusal. Obviously, I, I, can we have delegated authority to to finalise that that particular reason um, at, at least? Um, we'd also need another reason for failure to um, uh, complete the legal agreement, which which would have been required uh, for affordable housing, uh, which was discussed in the update report. Um, on other reasons, um, I'm, I'm not hearing uh, anything clear about um, access, so um, perhaps we don't we don't do that. I'm hearing concerns about the basement and light levels. Um, you heard from the officer there that he considered that was ex acceptable in that regard. So I do need to know if the committee needs to pursue that one really as, a, as contrary to policy uh, CC8, safeguarding immunity. Um, and then uh, Councillor Page's concern about um, loss of employment. Um, I, I suppose a, a, an officer comment on this one would be something like that would be normally be seen as a, a, a non-conforming use, I suppose, in, in old fashioned parlance within the residential area. So I thought I think it would be slightly difficult to sustain. But if, if the committee wanted to add that, then then we would. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Page. Well, with respect, the light industrial use precedes the planning legislation. You know, this isn't something that's suddenly been inserted. So the lot that's a well established use there. So the non conforming use I would dispute, Richard. So I think one can argue that um, quite. I, I think there's a, a lot of merit in arguing that. And likewise, the uh, the basement point, whatever as well. I mean, that's uh, a subjective view from the officers on balance, I accept, but uh, so. Um, thank, thank, thank you, Councillor Page. Uh, um, can, can I ask uh, very politely um, which policies um, support your view about the light industrial, please? <laughs> what do you mean? Sorry, the 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 light industrial use has been there predates the planning it's an established use okay. so what is the argument then about the loss of it it is an established use it's been there for over 100 years uh, um, so, 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 so can i just jump in so so sure. th suppose you're the only council that's raised this issue in terms of the loss of the employment use are you are you saying that the exist? I suppose we're trying to articulate into the reason for refusal. Why does this development of the employment use? Uh, why is it unacceptable? Are you saying that there is a requirement for small industrial units in residential areas, which would um, maybe be our variety of employment areas policy? It, it, we're trying to find out how would we um, defend what you're trying to. Officers say officers do not object to the proposed loss of employment land. Hmm. I do object, and I'm suggesting the committee should. I, mean, I, I, I suppose, uh, Councillor Page, I was uh, trying to get uh, a handle on the harm yeah. in planning terms. I'm, uh, I didn't, what was that last phrase you used, Richard? Sorry, trying to get a handle on the harm in planning terms, Chair. A harm, right. Um, I, I think, yeah, we're, we're good. we could be here all night trying to mm, work exactly. out what we're trying. Um, I understand the employment concerns, but perhaps maybe the way of dealing with this is in terms of the loss of the, the building of um, Townscape Merit is it's it's townscape merit comes from its employment use i suppose its employment appearance so would councillor page be content with us seeking to combine the, the concerns about the loss of the employment use and the building it's in with the the with the design reason for refusal because I, I think that's the only way that i'm trying to run through my brain the employment policies and I can't think of one that would actually attach to this site, given that it's not in a co-employment area. 
to strengthen the reasons for refusal mm. and loss of employment land is is one of the is a fundamental part of our planning policies and in the local plan <coughs> okay. so how you dress it up i don't mind but i think it's it is a worth unless unless colleagues feel that that it is not relevant but you know officers actually talk about the loss of employment land can i suggest we right. we've all i think understand where councillor page is coming from and um when you've taken this away to look at the uh, the whole range of re reasons for refusal um perhaps you could just share that with us um to make sure that it makes the point that councillor page is trying to make is that okay otherwise as judy says we'll be here all night yeah okay right are we done with that one then thank you very much and uh, we then move on to uh, the last item, which is uh, not the last item to be heard this evening, but item 12, which is the other public speaking item, um, which is um, the item that Councillor Carnell referred to earlier, and it's on page 133. So, officer introduction, please, and then. Oh, has it started already? Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. Good evening, committee members. Yes, thank you, Beatrice. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, this application relates to a site at 82 Albert Road. Planning perm permission is sought for a single story rear extension and uh, two new VLAX windows to help to the rear roof slope. The application has been called in to be decided by Planning Applications Committee by Ward Councillor Paul Cano due to concerns raised by the neighbour. The proposed rear extension would have a flat roof and exterior walls would be of red brick to match the existing side elevation. The proposed northern side elevation would have three windows, small windows located two metres above ground level and the side door. A one meter gap will be retained between the extension and the boundary fencing. And the proposed two new VLAX windows would be to the rear roof slope. The proposed development would not be visible from the public realm. And uh, due to the nature and scale of the proposed development, officers are recommending approval of this scheme subject to conditions. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. And um, we have uh, public speaking, as we said, on this one. And first of all, we have, I believe, um, Judith Dawson and Barry McNamara speaking against the application. Sorry, we've kept you waiting quite so long. You never know where planning is going to end up. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself and uh, then you've got two and a half minutes each. Um, I, I'm planning to speak entirely for both of us for myself. So does that give me five minutes? It does give you five minutes. Yeah, two times two and a half. Thanks. So I'm just speaking on behalf of myself, Barry, Mac, Barry McNamara and Judith Dawson um, in re re regard to 84 Albert Road. Cavisham RG 47 PL. Thank you very much for listening to us today. Um, we've tried to, uh, in the, uh, creating this objection, uh, to be as pragmatic as we could and keep within the bullet points of what is uh, um, within your remit to make decisions. So uh, <clears throat> the thrust of our objection is the scale and the proximity of the um, proposed development and uh, the effect of compromise as we see it on our privacy and i think the best way for me to try and talk in order to get in uh, well in time is just to speak as if bullet points and along the way to try and uh, do in with so doing to sort of accentuate this aspect of the scale and indeed the um 
proximity. So can I start by saying that we, in principle, raise no objections at all to the idea of an extension. Um, it's perfectly normal. Um, everybody's doing it. And um, th that's fine by us. Um, it, the surprise came uh, when we saw the nature of it. We weren't shown the plans in, in advance. So we basically saw what was um, published by the council. And um, we, uh, we, we, so, right, so these two gardens, the garden at number 82 and the garden at our place at 84, they're big gardens. And so we kind of assumed that any extension would more or less follow what we call the footprint, including the side footprint of the building. And any sort of extras like boot rooms and shower rooms would go on the end. And if you look on your diagrams, you will see that number 80, which is the other side of 82, or logically enough, has got a sort of old um, out of use building and to build in any way adjacent to that would not be controversial. So, and there's been an, um, a, a, an extension recently on the other side of us, 84A, and it has gone, we've raised no objections, it's all perfect, and it's a very pleasant building and everybody's happy. The current plans that we have here create a 30 foot long building and with a 30 foot narrow passage of one meter width with a back door and various other things which I will mention. And that, that will be built right alongside, right alongside our little bit of patio and garden that are in the, the, the domestic end, end of the garden. It will obviously generate frequent family use, the door that I'm referring to. And so the amount of traffic that will pass along our boundary wall, which is five foot high and is the original Edwardian building, uh, uh, originally construction, that will be uh, impinge. So uh, I would like to also make a slight correction to the um, submission by a case officer. There is no hedge. There is no nothing but the five foot wall to between us as any kind of visual barrier. There's no hedge on either side of it and any kind of plants and shrubs that are on our side are purely because I'm a garden enthusiast and I planted them six years ago. Most of them are deciduous, which means the leaves fall off. So we would only have visual protection for four, four and a half months of the year. The side elevation, high windows, a door, possible, ex no, definitely extractor fans, flues. We're asking you to see that that is not a residential prospect. It's a municipal one. And we're asking you to, if sympathy is allowed, <laughs> to consider that. So um, there's the issue of visual dominance. It will be 13 feet high. And because it's so close to our boundary, one meter, to us, visually, it will just look like the wall has been built another eight feet from the present five to the proposed 13. That's 32 courses of bricks, which will look like they just sit on top of the wall. And the roof will be flat and it's not and it's pitched. It's, there's no pitch on it in any way. So it's tantamount to a brick wall, 13 foot high visually. That's my point. I must make that point. And so we think that it would be appropriate, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to say it, that we had a committee visit. Can I just you've got 30 seconds left. Right you are. So I'm asking you with a bit of rhetoric at the end, given what I've described, the 30 foot long and the one foot meter distance, how is this not a dominant development? How is it not overshadowing? How is it not detrimental? How does it not compromise privacy and our living conditions? And I end by saying, as I say, in principle, no objection. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, has anybody got a question they want to ask? I'm not seeing anybody, so thank you very much for your time. Uh, and then we have also got the uh, applicant um, who wishes to speak or an agent on behalf of the applicant. Steve Gibson. Good Hello, evening. Everyone. Hello. Could you introduce yourself and say um, what the basis of your involvement is? Thank you. And then you've got your five minutes. Thank sure. you. Sure. 
Um, my name is Steve Gibson. I'm the applicant for 82 Judith and Barry and my neighbours. Obviously, a uh, difficult situation. Um, basically, we bought the property a year ago from Judith. Um, and from the outset, we've always said that we are planning to develop and extend it. Um, obviously, we were disappointed that they've objected to it. And um, I guess I, I want to uh, kind of respond to the three specific things. We have addressed the softening of the wall. We have recessed it back to the meter to give them, uh, you know, a little bit more. We always want to retain the path down the side. Um, in terms of privacy, we currently have a very long, thin kitchen, and that looks directly across to their dining area. By extending it the way we're proposing, we actually remove the view of them from us and us from them. So we actually are turning the orientation of the house to actually give ourselves a view of our garden, and that's the principal reason for doing it. Um, the utility rooms and those kind of things could go on the end, but we've already got that. We can't see anything in our garden. Um, on this issue of uh, the overdevelopment, every other house has gone to the full width uh, around us. We have, we have not extended to the boundary. We have come back in a metre. We have not gone out as long as anyone else. Uh, we have not gone out as high. What you don't see from the plan, uh, the street view, is that the house next door to us has done exactly the same extension as us, but has gone double height. The one the other side of uh, Judith and Barry has also uh, extended, and the overlap of Judith and Barry's on their neighbour, 84A, is a long wall, the same as it is with ours. So um, it, it then comes down to style. I know Judith and Barry have, have commented on the way that our um, extension is proposed to look. Um, we followed the parapet look because there was a parapet and flat roof at the front of our house. We talked about, I've mis mistakenly referred to it as yellow bricks, but it's a grey and yellow brick that we were planning to use at the, at the back. Judith and Barry requested that it was red and we've changed that to red. Um, and basically, um, we don't, as I say, we don't think the privacy is worse. We think it's in keeping with everything around and the other extensions, as you can see there, have gone wider, longer and higher than we're proposing. And we do believe it's personal opinion. We think it's going to look great when it's done. And that's all I've got. Thank you very much. Has anybody got any questions? No, not seeing anybody. So thank you for your time. Oh, sorry, can Councillor Stanford Beale, late hand there. Sorry. Um, they, they talked about overlooking from the windows on the side. Can you just clarify that they're actually at high level? They're, they're, they're high. Level. They're high level. They're yeah. So, so they're just to give light into the build, light into the building. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. But basically, you've put a kitchen on the back, like we see in every Sarah Beanie program. Ab absolutely. Kitchen. We've just knocked down a, a, a decrepit utility room, and we've extended across the width. Yeah, and so so big doors onto the garden. So the, right. side, the side door you wouldn't be using much. You're going to mainly be going out the back doors to the garden. We we have young children, and they find it a lot easier to just access the garden straight out the back without going through lots of different doors. The side door is really with the boot room. Is if we have to hose them down, basically. Which you will do occasionally. Occasionally, we'll have to. Yeah. Thank you. Nobody else. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, Councillor Carnell is the ward councillor. You wish to speak on this one, yeah? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to support this proposal in its current form due to the size and proximity of the proposed extension. Or would you would you like me to propose the site visit first? I think that would be helpful. Thank um, you. In that case, Chairman, I'd like to propose that we defer this decision subject to a subsequent site visit. Right. Um, has anybody got anything to say on that, officers? No? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, I think you're you're already declaring that you've predetermined, aren't you? Yes, yeah, so it's for the rest of us to see, but it, I think it'd be helpful if we have the debate um, when we when we've actually if we're going on a site visit after we've done that. Yep. So, um, my apologies, Chair. Would would the site visit include the development property and the neighbours so that we could see the potential impact from their side? Did you hear that? Was I? I'm sure that can be arranged. Yeah. Um, yeah. If Thank you. Just something. Yes, it would need to be an accompanied site visit, so we need to make arrangements with um, both. Uh, both neighbours, the applicant and the the Judith and her partner, to to go to their property to see the 
the view from their point of view. Uh, the date for the next cyber visit is already in your diaries, so we will confirm the time. Um, what we normally do now, members, is that we, we meet at the site. We used to get, get you all there, but you all go there independently. we we'll meet you at the site um, and then make our visit to both of the properties. Such so, uh, means we don't need to discuss this anymore this evening. We'll have the discussion after we've done that. Back to the next committee, probably. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for, you for coming, all of you. Um, which then takes us back to the order that uh, we ought to be in, which is the uh, the next the next item is the item eight, land to the west of Abattoirs Road. And I believe Alison Amoa is going to introduce this. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you. Can't see you. We can hear you. Yes, I'm, I'm always off the camera. Right. This is a retrospective application of 40 residential pods for rough sleepers on land to the west of Abattoirs Road, to the south of the railway line, and further pods for offices for on site support the future occupiers from the charity St Mungo's. The scheme is underway but not yet occupied and will include some amenity space, landscaping, bin storage cycle and car parking. The main issue raised through consultation relates to matters of potential antisocial behaviour from the use of the site. As set out in the update report, Thames Valley Police have confirmed they have no objection to the scheme and are satisfied with the proposed measures which include access controls for the vehicle and pedestrian access points supported by CCTV and on-site staff 24 hours per day. The pods are robustly manufactured and include a range of measures contributing towards sustainability policy requirements and the pods could be reused. The site is currently allocated in the Reading Borough local plan for a mixed use to include housing, but no such scheme have, has been progressed in recent times. This much needed temporary move on accommodation for vulnerable homeless people for which there is an overriding public need, although not wholly meeting some adopted planners, planning policy requirements as set out in the report, is considered to outweigh normal policy requirements in this instance. <laughs> it responds positively to a number of corporate priorities with respect to addressing homelessness and rough sleeping and is recommended for approval subject to conditions and informatives as set out in the main and update reports. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody want to? Oh, we need to remind ourselves that both Councillor Emerson and Councillor Ennis are declaring um, an interest as lead councillors, but will speak and not vote. Councillor Page. Chair, Ward councillors, myself and Councillor Rowland and Councillor Ayub are very much in favour of the application. Um, it uses a site that uh, has been the subject of uh, problems and ASB um, and I believe um, subject to amended conditions um, will offer a better supervised site um, than is currently the case. Um, the need for this accommodation will be, I've no doubt, picked up by other uh, speakers, but certainly representing the town centre area, the important accommodation that is provided um, on this site um, is such that will enable us to provide and uh, offer uh, assistance that we have been unable to offer as an authority uh, to date. This has already been through policy committee earlier this year, uh, Chair, and I think received uh, unanimous uh, support on that occasion. Um, there has been funding from government to assist us with the, um, with the project. Um, having spoken to some of the local residents, I think whilst their apprehensions in the early stages were well founded, um, we have, we as ward councillors, have been insistent throughout the discussions with our housing colleagues 
um, that in order for this site to be delivered effectively in the interests not only of the residents that will be moving in, but also residents nearby, it is essential that there is 24 hour on site um, supervision and monitoring. And that has been accepted um, and is designed into the scheme, which is why I welcome in the update uh, pack um, amended condition 13, um, which builds on that and writes in not only the 24 hour on site monitoring, but um, the uh, relevant support delivered by a secure access system and CCTV. And obviously, one wouldn't, one shouldn't have to write it in, but it is um, obviously belt and braces that the cameras are of a standard which enable good image capture and are cited appropriately. And I welcome, therefore, the comments from the Thames Valley Police Crime Prevention um, Advisor. Um, which goes into much more detail and I think has been accepted by um, the housing uh, department and St Mungo's who will be um, delivering um, the service with whom we meet regularly um, and with whom or in whom we have full confidence in their ability to be able to deliver um, a very effective service on site for rough sleepers and hopefully move as many rough sleepers, not only into this site, but then on uh, to hopefully more permanent and secure um, accommodation and employment. There will always be the hardcore. There still are um, a handful of hardcore rough sleepers refusing to engage, but I think this provision here will enable us to make a very substantial inroad into the problem uh, locally, and I therefore welcome the application, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Ernest. Yeah, thank you. Um, certainly um, speaking in support, predetermined, I will abstain. Um, definitely um, really pleased and quite proud, actually, that this development, which is a national pathfinder development with government support by Reading Borough Council, I hope it has all cross party support. I know some of our councillors here say, what the hell do Reading do? They do this. They do this more than any other council in the country is trying to find innovation and different ways of working with vulnerable people who are homeless. And I think this is a trailblazer that will be successful. Hopefully it will eradicate a lot of rough sleeping, but that is a big ask. Uh, a big ask post COVID when evictions are coming forwards. Um, I think it's a it's a it's why it's special is in fact that there will be people who are particularly vulnerable, hard to reach, who would like to move into these and we would have the support services available um, to work with people to move them on into, into uh, more private long term or council accommodation. That's why it was good. It didn't come forward um, in planning at the start because it was under government emergency proposals under COVID. Uh, it's now come forward and I'm pleased it has so we can discuss it. Uh, it's giving people hope. It's giving people who have no hope, who feel hopeless, who feel no one's there for them, who, who, who are struggling, a potential for future accommodation. And that's more than, it's more than that accommodation, it's services as well. On planning terms, I'm really pleased in the update, Pat, because we have to be honest with ourselves, as I said, uh, we can't say it's going to cure homelessness, as many people would say. It's certainly going to go a long way to doing it. We can't say there will be no ASB because some of the individuals who are vulnerable and on working on the uh, living on the streets um, are prone sometimes to antisocial behaviour. Uh, it's one of the reasons why they lost their accommodation in the first place. Some of some individuals. So the CCTV, the support from St Mungo's, um, a wraparound service will, I believe, go some way, a long way, working with the police into minimising antisocial behaviour. But the residents living nearby and the ward councillors need to be reassured on that. And when I was the lead, and I know going forward that we, as a council, attempted to try and work as much as we can installing the CCT, so I'm really pleased with that. So very much support this. One, 
am predetermined, so I can't vote in favour. I shall go off and get myself some water. But I hope all councillors, colleagues will support this going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Stamford Beale. Thank you, Chair. I um, would like to say we've had some pods like this in Peppard water several years now, shipping containers that um, we put vulnerable families who otherwise would have been in bed and breakfast. Um, and I was a wee bit concerned about how they would be for families. But actually, when we went to visit, they were just so spacious inside, beautifully finished, nice and warm. And and the families love them. So I'm very confident that this will be a good solution for this particular vulnerable group of people. Very pleased that our government has funded it. Um, very pleased that we had the Everyone In campaign at the beginning of COVID because we had vulnerable individuals living on the streets, which obviously if you could catch COVID is just not what you want to do, is be living out. Um, so, and it's great that we're not just providing buildings, we've got a service there to help these people because, you know, people have got particular issues as to why they've become homeless. Um, so they need the appropriate mental health support, alcoholism support, et cetera, um, to help them get them back on their feet, get them back into proper, you know, long term housing and employment, hopefully, in these wonderful employment areas we have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Emerson. Thank you, Chair. I'm not going to speak too long because I think colleagues have already summed it up and just, you know, add my support. Obviously, I won't be voting with my planning hat on, but with my lead councillor hat on, I fully support this application. Uh, you know, during COVID, over 260 homeless residents were um, supported during the crisis with the government's everyone in scheme funding, as Councillor Stanford Bill has referred to with more than 100 of those now in permanent accommodation. But as Councillor Ennis touched on, we know it's not an easy solution and it's a really complex situation for many of our homeless residents. And that's why this scheme is something that can really help tackle that in terms of that wraparound support. And I know Abby colleagues have already spoken to the objections from local residents there in terms of alleviating concerns about ASB, et cetera. And I'm grateful for their support. And I think, you know, I've been down to the site, as have Abby colleagues, and, you know, it is very aesthetically pretty in terms of, you know, the orange and the black that you can see as well. And I just thought I'd mention that, and, you know, in terms of planning, whilst I won't be voting on it, you know, this is a temporary situation and the council have already said publicly that it would not be a long term solution and permanent housing development will be sought for this site. But I just wanted to pick up on how aesthetically the site looks as well. And these are really decent homes for some of our most vulnerable in Reading. So it's something we should all be very proud of. Thank you. I'm not seeing anybody else. So um, can we see all those in favour of the recommendation to grant? Thank you very much. Uh, and that takes us on to um, item nine, which is 35 Bramshell Road and, and the rest of the houses in that area. And that's David Brett to introduce. Well, I'm hoping uh, they've done that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, part of retrospective planning permission is sought for exterior alterations and repair works at terraced houses along Bramshaw Road and Norcott Road. Uh, the, applicant, the applicant believed the nature of the works being carried out may be mainly repairs and refurbishment and the planning permission was not needed so has pressed on with the project. However, this application was quickly submitted when advice was provided on changes to the external walls. The external wall insulation system is a key component of this project and aims to improve thermal efficiency through conserving fuel and power. Extension of roof overhangs to gable ends or dormer star roofs are also proposed to allow for the depth of the external wall insulation. No objections have been received in response to the public consultation. Uh, the officer recommendation is therefore to grant planning permission subject to recommended conditions. Thank you very much. Anybody want to speak on this, Councillor Emerson? Is that you indicating? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just briefly, I just think again, this is a good news um, story and its investment in our stock in, in terms of, you know, the net carbon aspirations the Council has uh, and its upgrade to homes. And again, as per the previous application, it's aesthetically pleasing in terms of what it looks like once it's completed. So I think it brings more harmony amongst all the neighbouring properties. But I think it's just a very good news story and I just want to commend this report. Thank you, Councillor Stamford-Beale. Thank you very much. Again, I'd just like to commend the report. 
Um, it's unfortunate the officers made a mistake, but it is it does give us the opportunity to see the finished article and it does look really good. So apart from improving the aesthetics, these are going to be warmer, more comfortable houses to live in and also cheaper to run for our residents, which is important. Um, and also we've got the you know, greenhouse effect, so it's 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 good from an environmental. So it's one of those. It's, it's good on all fronts. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Devine. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'd like to commend everyone that has had a part in this. Um, because actually the problem it's addressing of insulating old uh, housing stock is a key thing to actually um, reducing our carbon output um, in the town as a whole. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing this actually complete. Uh, and I'd love to be able to say we could actually spread it across the rest of the town very quickly, but clearly uh, we need some funding before that can happen. Um, but I am uh, well impressed so far um, that the council is actually tackling uh, the issue of uh, insulation for older buildings. Uh, and I just hope that it's successful and that we can actually push on uh, and insulate far more homes because we really needs it. Thank you. Not seeing anybody else. So um, with the exception of Councillor Emerson and Councillor Ennis, who agreed earlier on, they would not be voting because of their other council role. Um, can we see all those in favour of this recommendation? Thank you very much. And uh, that takes us on to item 10, which is the one that was deferred last time for us all to do a sort of individual site visit. Um, the um, advertising on Rose Kiln Lane, and I believe Ethne Humphreys is going to introduce this. Thank you, Chair. This application relates to a freestanding digital advertising screen to be located on the eastern side of the A33 to the west of the River Kennet. I'm aware that additional commentary from the applicant was circulated to councillors yesterday, but I have nothing further to add to the main agenda report at this stage. The application is recommended for refusal as set out in the main recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Have we got any comments or questions? Councillor Page. Let me start the ball rolling. I, I think there's uh, likely to be differing views on, on, on this um, chair. Um, when when this was first mooted, I, I had uh, uh, concerns, or when I was told there was an application um, coming in, um, I um, had uh, thought that it was initially on the other side of the road. That was rapidly dispelled, and uh, it's important to emphasise that this is on the east side um, of the A3, uh, A33, um, and not on the west side where um where the previous application which went to appeal um uh was um proposed um i think it's important to draw attention to colleagues that the uh reason for uh refusal is focused solely on the uh, appearance um of what is described as an unattractive and prominent structure um, and people will have their own views about the attractiveness or lack of attractiveness. Um, there are no public safety or transport objections um, or ecological uh, or biodiversity objections. Um, and page 110 outlines those. Transport had initial concerns. Uh, those have been um, overcome in terms of the uh, uh, location and in terms of uh, compromising any um, existing CCTV cameras. Um, the biodiversity issue is addressed in paragraph 6.6 .6 and the council's ecologist having originally raised concerns um, has now um, withdrawn those. So the issue is, um, is there really um, the impact that uh, perhaps uh, an initial reading of this report would uh, leave you to believe in terms of the major landscape feature, which is essentially the area to the west of the A33. 
and that is the area um, the Kennet Meadows that we as a council have fought over many decades and you chair and I've been involved in campaigns over many decades to protect that area and we've been successful. Um, but since the A33 went in, um, this sliver of land between um, the Kennet and the A33 um, is really pretty redundant. It's not used for recreation purposes. You can't go out there and sit there or pitch a tent or um, have a picnic. And, uh, and you certainly wouldn't go walking through that area when you have the river uh, a few yards away or go a bit further afield to the Kennet Meadows. Um, so, Chair, I'm, I'm um, much more disposed to this application in this site uh, and on this side of the road and would not countenance an application on the other side which would intrude into the um, Kennet and Holybrook uh, um, landscape uh, feature which is very so very important on that west side. The impact on the east side is minimal and I'm grateful to the applicant. Um, I hope colleagues have had a chance to look at what was circulated uh, yesterday um, because one of the photos rightly shows um, the view um, and uh, um, we can see from the, the photos the very limited sighting that you would have from uh, the uh, towpath, um, sorry, the footpath um, that runs along uh, between there and the um, A33. Um, so Chair, I am, um, I suppose I am sympathetic to this application um, and really uh, disagree with the officer uh, recommendation on this, um, but I'm aware that that uh, um, may well not be a view shared by others on the uh, committee, but uh, um, I therefore Chair um, am disposed to grant consent for um, this, um, um, bearing in mind that virtually all the objections have been overcome and we're down to the very much more subjective view as to whether this really would have the impact um, on the area that, that is uh, described. Thank you. Councillor Josh Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think... <laughs> Um, I think I'll take a slightly different view to Councillor Page, which is rare of me, I know. Um, it feels a little bit like this is an application for someone just to leave their telly on all night. And I wonder if that's a good use of technology, having declared a climate emergency. Um, I see within the application that this, these new LED screens claim energy efficiency but, and yet still use a great deal. Um, but there was no evidence provided to support that, but it was within the application. Um, and that concerns me, Chair. I, I, I'm not convinced of the need for this. And whilst I agree with Councillor Page that it is a subjective decision, I've given this one some thought and, and we were asked to do a site visit. And although I don't drive, I obtained a lift <laughs> a lot along this piece of tarmac. <laughs> no, I got a lift in this instance. Um, and I'm going to say that I support our officer's opinion. Uh, on this one, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I do agree with Councillor Page and would think that this uh, application should be uh, given approval. I think that we can get caught up on is this going to damage the climate emergency when actually, as we've just seen today, we've approved huge applications that make much more of a positive impact on anything that would have anything tiny, if any difference on it. And yes, small steps are the way forward, but also we do need to be realistic and offer something that is a, you know, an, a benefit and an addition to that area. You know, as someone who commutes along the river uh, to Green Park, um, that is an area where you can see a giant pylon. And, you know, this is not some area of outstanding natural 
beauty yet. I'm sure, you know, at one point we can look at getting the Kennet area designated alongside the Chilterns just to, you know, protect it from any more bus lanes. But however, at the moment, it definitely, you know, feels as a heavy industrial area. And we do have something a little bit further up the A33 with a much bigger you know, footprint that offers, you know, something without any of the public safety messaging that's proposed there as it's a partnership with the council. And I think it is a very different application to the one that was uh, viewed a few years ago on the west side. So I do support um, Councillor Page's proposal. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rowland, you're indicating next. I was. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to quickly state uh, that I obviously have uh, there, there's concerns, I think, uh, on everyone's part that we are in the middle of a climate emergency um, and um, we have a situation with the Kennet Meadows that we all uh, love and fiercely protect. Um, I will be choosing to abstain on this item uh, this evening. Uh, I have spoken with um, and gotten a sense of of the uh, situation here uh, with officers and with others to understand that the impact uh, is perceived to be um, of not a um, not a substantial uh, viewpoint or uh, anything like that. Um, I probably have a difference of opinion. Uh, I am rather torn about uh, the the value of the of the climate emergency, the value of the area. But I do uh, in listening to colleagues here this evening um, understand that there's there's an, a very fine uh, point here, but I will personally be abstaining for that reason. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lang. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I find myself in support of a Councillor Challenger and Councillor Page. Um, from a traffic management point of view, we, it was mentioned at planning, I think it was the last one or the one before, HGVs travelling through Kennet Island. I think this could, you know, we could put up traffic warnings about that, banning HGV traffic from Kennet Island. I think that would, this would help the situation. With the other one being past the junction, you know, I think every little helps with that. Um, also, it's a it's a built up commercial area already with the casino on the opposite side, big electricity pylons. As Councillor Challenge has said, it's not an area of outstanding beauty at all. It's a it's a bus lane, start of a bus lane, and it's the A33 that takes you onto the M4. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Not seeing anybody else, and clearly we do have a difference of opinion here, so um, I will. Uh, ask all those in favour of, um, no, I'll do it the other way around this time, don't I? <laughs> all those in favour of Councillor Page's proposal that we actually accept this and give approval for this, which I assume is seconded by Councillor Challenger. Yep, so all those in favour. All those who um, are against this application. And all those who are abstaining. Thank you, that is carried. Uh, right, which takes us on to the last item, um, which is Prospect Park um, improvements. Um, and I believe that's Ethne Humphreys as well. Thank you, Chair. Um, sorry, could I just go back to the um, the previous application? If we are if, if we're approving the application, we'll need to um, have various conditions attached. Can I suggest that um, that's delegated to officers to consider and finalise those conditions? Thank you. Yes, Chair. that's that's fine. Thank you. But I would like I, I think it'd be helpful to um, share that with um, myself and the vice chair and councillor Page. OK, noted. Thank you. Thank you. And or on the ward councillor as well, if you want to be included. No, no, Neighbouring ward councillor. Um, Who's your ward, <laughs> right? Do you want to be involved in this? Yeah, OK. Ward councillors and chair, vice chair and councillor Page. Thank you. Is that OK? Can we go on to um, the last item? 
Thank you, Chair. This is a Regulation 3 application with associated application for listed building consent submitted by Reading Borough Council relating to Prospect Park, a registered park and garden. The proposals are to provide a mix of indoor and outdoor leisure and recreational facilities to include an indoor low ropes course, an outdoor mini golf course, an outdoor archery range and portable climbing wall. There is a brief update report for this application which confirms tree conditions to be attached and both applications are recommended for approval as set out in the main recommendation with the additional condition as set out in the update report. Thank you Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Ennis, I, were you indicating yeah? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, um, as my, I'm very, I'm very pleased that we're considering this. We, for Suffolk councillors, I, I think Prospect Park is probably one of the best, if not, I would say the best park in Reading. Um, sorry about that, Palmer, but I think Prospect's wonderful. Love the place. It enhances local people's lives. It's got a lot of activities, uh, and it's a really useful place to to live close to i um we have said in the past though that some of the um the the, the young you know the stuff for young people's getting tired it's, it was revolutionary when it first came in in the 90s i believe a long time ago but it's been had some great use and we need to upgrade and here we are and i think it's really good and i think the the, the facilities that are available uh, can fit in the park, uh, can certainly, you know, work in the park itself. And I think it will enhance the the life, the life chance, the life um, of people locally, young people and families as well. So um, very much welcome this. The question about parking has been an issue, of course, which has got in there. Um, you know, currently what we've got is the, uh, the COVID um, testing Place which has taken spaces and also will bring spaces. Um, you know, there's been some local locals who were talking about parking. Uh, we'd hope they wouldn't have to go there. They'd walk there. Uh, locals would walk there to to the park. Although this will be a facility that the whole of Reading, including the east, of course, and the north, uh, will um, uh, will enjoy. Um, so there will be some traffic. And we note that 101 spaces, which is an increase, will take place. Not that we want to welcome that, but it's about being realistic. But certainly great to see upgrade at Prospect Park. Uh, and I know the locals and the people of Reading will very much welcome this. So much, much happy to support. Thank you. And we've also got Councillor Rowland and Councillor Stamford Bill wanting to speak, but not take part in the vote as they declared earlier. Councillor Rowland. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, this is part of my uh, lead member capacity uh, with recreation and is a uh, project that I've followed for, through for quite some time uh, through the COVID slog that we've all been living through. Um, this is part of delivering uh, really positive uh, improvements uh, in the greatest park uh, in Reading, as, as Councillor Ennis alluded to. Listen, I think it is really, really important that we have that wonderful park on the east side and that wonderful park on the west side. And this is about making, uh, making that uh, Prospect Park uh, everything it can be uh, and a real destination, a real reason for, for young people, for people of all abilities to um, to get out and enjoy the park, and this is talking about more of the um, the the use of the uh, disused uh, building right now, and the way that we're going to convert that into an out uh, the the low ropes activity with an outdoor mini golf zone and and all of those things. So it'll it, it will be uh, with a the small cafe, and so it will be a lot more exciting uh, a place to be and um, and keep it that destination that we all we all want it to be. I know there's been some, there was some allusion uh, in the, um, and discussion uh, in the papers about the, uh, about trees and a small percentage or a small uh, bit of trees that were going to be removed. If I re remember, uh, that has to do with the, with the um, golf, uh, the mini golf uh, area, uh, but those will be, those will be uh, in, in the long term uh, part of a net gain that we will be have seen with, with trees 
in Prospect Park and uh, Section 7.34 um, highlights that dedication that the Council's Parks team have uh, to ensuring that we are not seeing a, a an impact on um, trees. So um, I do trust that Councillor Stanford Beal will do far better than I can. I seem to have a catch in my throat tonight about discussing uh, the um, the wonderful accessibility that we are building in with this uh, about making sure that our are coming to the park and uh, once we're there, the parking and all of those other issues and the real accessibility of the site will be uh, amplified and is something that I know the officers have worked very, very hard on. So I definitely, um, um, while I will be abstaining, I am definitely very much looking forward to this, this uh, taking place and moving on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stanford Beal. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Ronis, Councillor Ronis. Um, Prospect Park, of course, is a grade two 19th century listed park. So this is an example of how Reading is, is taking uh, a nice historic asset that we have and we're modernising it. And with a nod to the climate emergency, we're not knocking the building down that's there. We're converting it and making the best use of an asset we already have. So I think that we really need to stress. Um, I've campaigned to get more leisure facilities in Reading. At the moment, many people know I run a county disability charity and we take children over to Thames Valley Adventure Playground in Taplow, fantastic place. But I can only hire it on a Sunday and a lot of people from Reading in Tilehurst would like to come, but they don't have cars and they can't get there. So to have this facility on their doorstep is going to be fantastic. Of course, Prospect Park is on a bus route so people can get there by bus. Um, which you know will reduce the number of car journeys. We're going to improve the access to the site so you can get there if you've got a large buggy or if you're in a wheelchair yourself, because most people that have mobility issues, they get it as they age. So, you know, grandparents in a wheelchair or parents in a wheelchair rather than children in wheelchairs. Um, also in improving the parking, because believe it or not, we didn't have a disabled parking bay in that car park. Um, so to improve that so that you can get from the car park into the site. Um, the site's got lots of exciting things, den building and a fire pit for one, as well as an external climbing wall for older children and a, a smaller climbing uh, facility for little little is inside, um, as well as a parents lounge, a cafe, and we've got some disabled toilets and in particular a changing places toilet. Um, doesn't sound much if you're not disabled, but it's going to be fantastic um, for for those individuals that do have you know additional needs to have that facility there. And I'm so pleased that officers have worked hard to get that in the building. Um, so it's it is really really exciting. Um, one thing is yes, we are losing a four Leylandi trees, but Leylandis aren't really native to this country. Um, the way they grow, they they don't allow anything to go underneath them, and they were starting to impact on one of the old oak trees. Um, so it was more important that we preserve the oak, um, and those trees will be replaced. So I'm not concerned about that. Although you know I'm very against cutting trees down if we can possibly avoid it. So I very much would like to thank all the officers in the parks team. Um, Councillor Rowlands for all her support and I commend the report to the committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't see anybody else. And um, just as the ward councillor on the other side of the best park in Reading, Councillor Ennis, I just add that this has been um, very popular um, with local residents and um, obviously people realise at the moment we've still got the COVID testing centre there so the sooner that is resolved the better so that we can crack on with this project and once that and the, the application we approved at the last committee for the new um, playground uh, it will make Prospect Park a, a destination for not only immediate location but as you've all said for people um, from elsewhere and I, I think everybody just wants us to get on with it so uh, welcome it very much. Can I see, I've, apart from Councillor Stamford Bill and Councillor Rowland, can I see all those in favour of this application? Thank you very much and thank you. And uh, yeah, we finished. You're not that late.